Welcome to part 3 of week 4 of the class Neuronal Dynamics. I promised that once we have reduced the system to two equations, we can do a lot of things. We can do phase plane analysis. And phase plane analysis can be used to understand spike generation. For example, during pulse input or during constant input. And this is the topic of this part. So, let's consider pulse input. An experimentalist may inject a very short current pulse into the neuron. The effect of this can be described in a Hodgkin-Huxley type model. Now we have reduced this to a two-dimensional neuron model. The pulse input would come in here. In the voltage equation. Let's see how this works. So here I have written again the equations of the Fitzhugh Nagumo model. There is a U null Klein defined by the UDT equals zero, which is given by a cubic function, that's the red curve here. And uh, then we have the W null line, which is given by a linear function indicated by a blue line here. The input is zero. So I of t is zero, except at this very short moment when we inject a current pulse. Now, in the limit, we can say we inject a charge Q at the moment t0. So this might be my moment t0. This is still a finite pulse but as we have seen I can make the pulse shorter and of larger amplitude. And then this current will go into the voltage equation. So what's going to happen with the voltage? Well at the beginning we are at the fixed point at the resting potential. This will be some negative value of the voltage and if I plot the voltage here say this is my resting value. Now the short current pulse is inserted into the voltage equation. On the left hand side I have the derivative of the voltage. If I put in the Dirac current pulse if I put in this charge Q in a very short moment of time, then the voltage will jump from its previous value to a new value. And this new value is delta U. It's just Q over C. Or I can also write r times q over tau, where tau is r times c. Now in the phase plane, which I have drawn here on the right hand side, a jump in the voltage means that the value of w, this was w rest, the value of w does not change, but the voltage jumps to a new value say to a new point here. So the pulse input acts like a jump in the voltage while W remains unchanged. Now what do we know? Now we are here. Well we know from the previous part that on the U node line the flow arrows are vertical and with a set of parameters that we have considered the flow would be upward, then it would turn around, and here it's downward. The flow on the W node line is horizontal, and arrows get bigger as we move away from the fixed point. Now, in between, there is some mixture of upward movement and leftward movement. So the arrows may look like this. In between here, arrows 
may look like this. Now with this preparation, let's draw the trajectory that arises from this new initial condition. Let's change colors. From this new initial condition, the direction of flow will be like this. We continue like this. We know that on the unilog line, it's vertically upward. Then we cannot move too far away because over here, we will be pushed leftward. So the flow is probably something like this here. Then we turn around. We move here horizontally. We come down. We come down and we end up here. So this is what the trajectory will look like. So, our voltage made a jump to the new value here. And from there on, it increases further. The voltage axis is horizontal, the voltage increases. So we know it increases further. That's the part one, the first part of the trajectory. But then it bends down. It bends over. Now here the voltage doesn't move for a moment and it comes down only slowly. This would be part two of the trajectory. Now here when it crosses the W null line, it's actually fairly big errors. So the downswing is quick. This will be phase three. And now you see we have an undershoot. The voltage here is lower than the voltage at rest. So in the end it will approaches it will approach the resting value from below. And this would be phase four of the trajectory. So this little current pulse called first a jump of the voltage to a new initial condition. And then from there on, we see a trajectory that corresponds to an action potential. This is the equivalent of an action potential in our two-dimensional neuron model. There's an upswing, there's a time when it stays close to the maximum, and there's a rapid downswing, and then it comes back from below to the resting potential. Well, this was a hand-drawn figure. Here is a computer-generated graph. The resting potential is here. The resting potential is about at minus 1.1. Now, if you give a negative current pulse, the voltage will jump to a new initial condition. And from this new initial condition, it will approach the resting potential with a little overswing, with a little oscillation, and then we are here at the resting potential. Now suppose we give a positive current pulse. From this resting value, the potential would be kicked upwards. It's a horizontal shift to a new starting condition, to a new initial condition. From here on, there will be a slow increase. The size of the arrows is still small. Then it will turn around. And then it will go down again. So, suppose I give my positive current pulse here. There's a jump to, say, 0.5. From there on, we move on to our maximum value to about, of about 2.
And at some point, arrows will increase, which indicates a rapid downswing. Until here, it will follow. It cannot go far away from this null line because it always pushed back by the nearly horizontal arrows. And so very slowly, it will go back to the resting potential. So this part will be slow, this part will be fast. Thus, a pulse input induces a jump of the voltage, leads to a new initial condition, either the blue one or the green one. From this new initial condition, we just follow the flow of the arrows, and this gives the voltage trajectory that we are expected to find. Thus, we can understand the generation of action potentials in a two-dimensional neural model. Action potentials will arise if the current pulse is sufficiently large. So this is my initial condition. If I make a large current pulse, the voltage trajectory will look like this. This corresponds to an action potential. This corresponds to a jump followed by an action potential. If I make the current pulse smaller, I jump to a different value. And the trajectory will look different. If I jump to a much smaller value, I don't have an excursion at all, but it returns immediately to the resting value. Spike generation will occur for large input pulses. So far, pulse input 